It is time <laughs> for the underdog. Yeah. Robert Rees, what have you found for us today? Yum, yum. I'm uh, taking a game from the um, European Women's Championship mm -hmm. and special attention for uh, probably a future world champion, only nine years old. Rem remember the name, Bodana Sifanandan. It's, um, it's absolutely uh, remarkable what she has been uh, performing over the last couple of months. And she just scored her first woman international master. Oh, uh, good. This is so crazy. At the age of nine, Arnie, I don't know what we were doing at in in that, in that age, but uh, it's incredible how strong these uh, kids are nowadays. And it's not only uh, just one result or one game which stands out, but we are going to see uh, one particular game. And I felt like an adult is playing who has a lot of experience, but she just plays chess for only a couple of years, um, I think. <laughs> well, obviously. <laughs> yeah, no, but I, 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 actually, I'm, I'm not sure when she started, but probably it's one of these kids who picked up the game in uh, pandemic at times, right? So, uh -huh. Could be, could um, be. She's uh, from, uh, she's English or is she Indian? Uh, I, well, uh, she's representing uh, England. England, I'm right. Not sure, yes, I'm not yes. sure where she's born, but... Um, I'm, I'm pretty um, sure I heard her name once or twice already. I think even Elizabeth Pates played against her and it was a draw or something. Or, but like, uh -huh. I mean, yeah, I, I think she has beaten a couple of hardcore players already, so... Uh, yeah, but and, and that was probably mainly in some Rapid or Blitz yeah. event. But the game we are looking at, it's a classical game. Classical the, game. The uh, European Women's Championship, as I said. And she's playing against a very strong player from uh, Armenia, Mariam Magrician, if I pronounce correctly. Yeah. And she's really strong. She's uh, rated strong, uh, yeah. almost uh, 300 points higher rated than uh, Bodana. And um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Mariam Magrician, she was European and World Youth Champion in 2022. Yes. Uh, I think one of these events she, she won with an undefeated uh, score, like 11 out of 11 or, or so. <laughs> so that... Uh, and, and she is only only 20 years old, so it's yeah. uh, it's a very interesting clash. Um, and probably both players are not at their peak yet. So let's let's see what happens in this game. Yeah, uh, looking forward to this. All right, let's see the underdog. Yeah, so um, Magrician is playing with white, Bodana mm -hmm. with uh, the black piece. So here we go, 1d4, d5, c4, c6, Slav uh, defense, knight of three, knight of six, knight c3, e6. So this is the, uh, the semi Slav. And uh, Mikrician goes for the setup with the move uh, G3. So it's mm -hmm. sort of a hybrid uh, Catalan Slav uh, opening. And uh, Black captures the, the pawn on uh, C4. It's probably one of the more ambitious uh, moves okay. after Bishop uh, G2. Normally, Black follows up with moves like B5 or knight bd7 trying to stick to the pawn on uh, on c4 so can i'm sorry i am already interrupting your flow but now i'm just realizing one thing i've never played this opening but this capture on c4 now makes sense because of the fianchetto plans from white because in other cases it would be e3 maybe or exactly exactly well it has yeah. its pros and, and cons like yeah. on one hand when the bishop is on on g2 it, it definitely could make sense to keep your pawn on d5 trying to restrict the mobility uh -huh. of the pawn but at, at the same time okay here it will be harder for white to regain the pawn on c4 because uh, you don't have the bishop on f1 any any longer uh -huh. so yeah, well it's hard to say what uh okay, what, what okay. Is yeah um Black instead played here bishop b4, which is also um, playable. Both sides castle. And here, uh, okay, white still has a wide variety of, of options, including something like knight e5 and trying to regain the pawn on um, on c4. Um, what Makrician is doing, I'm not 100% sure about. She goes for the move bishop g5, which is uh, a normal developing move. But after knight bd7, um, you see that at some point black is going to play h6 and white is practically forced to trade off the uh, the bishop for the for the knight. So white uh, played here to move e4, uh, occupying the center. But after h6 and uh, taking on f6 and black recaptures with the queen, looks as if uh, trading off one pair of, of minor pieces uh, should be quite okay for for black, mm -hmm. uh, considering that uh, black's position is a bit a bit cramped. But there is also here the move uh, queen e2. So here white finds a different way 
of uh, targeting the pawn on uh, on c4. And uh, yeah, I, I, I would expect here something like b5, trying to stick to the pawn. Mm -hmm. uh, but black instead decided here to take first on uh, on c3, which is also uh, playable. Pawn takes, and here the move uh, b5. And um, what what's important to realize that white is a pawn down, but if you try to attempt to regain the pawn by uh, challenging the, the structure on, on the queen side, black is able to maintain it intact with um, with a6. And if you ever take, there are c takes b5, and this chain is, is pretty strong, especially in the long run. Yeah, so um, if uh, white doesn't prove any compensation, uh, later on these pawns, they, they will come forward. So instead, White had a had a different idea, trying to prove compensation, and uh, Magritian played e5 here to uh, to attack the queen. Queen goes back to e7, and now White's plan is being revealed as the knight comes back to uh, to d2, mm -hmm. opening up the diagonal for the bishop, targeting the pawn on uh, c6. Black played the obvious move, bishop uh, b7, and um, well, here the move rook f b1. Played. I think now it's getting interesting as why rook fb1, not the other rook. Well, I think white wants to keep the option to uh, to play a4 at, at some point so that the rook can be useful there as uh, as well. Um, and here in, in this particular situation, white is even threatening to take on uh, on c4. Oh, yeah. Make, making use of the unprotected bishop on, uh, on b7. But... Don't try this kind of uh, cheapos against uh, <laughs> nine years old kids. <laughs> they, they see it, and uh, um, there, are, there are different ways of meeting the, the threat. But rook fb8 is also an interesting uh, idea. So both sides are keeping their uh, queen's rook in the, in the corner, so that after uh, white goes a4, there's the option to play a6, and white will not be able to conquer the, um, the a file. White goes for the move knight e4. So here we see nice uh, strategical play by White, uh, trying to get into the to the d6 square, and uh, in that case there is quite some long-term pressure with this octopus knight and a beautiful bishop on g2, but Bodana plays very very well here at uh, this point and finds the uh, move to uh, break free, which is uh, c5. Wow. Very nice uh, typical move for Slav players. Okay. If you are able to get in that move. Um, and solve the problem of your light squared bishop, then everything is uh, is under control. I think after uh -huh. pawn takes b5, pawn takes, you're not able to take on, on b5, of course, because the rook on uh, a1 will be hanging. So therefore, white captured first on, uh, on a8. Uh, bishop takes back, so now the rook on b8 uh... is the pawn. That's what you missed, there, Arnie. I, I I saw that. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Okay, good. That uh, would make sense. Yeah. Very, very nice piece coordination by uh, by Black Indeed. here. Indeed. And um, knight e6. So the knight comes in anyway. Yeah, but this knight, like, this is the other thing which I was like noticing that this knight is such a monster. Yeah, but the good thing for Black is that uh, quite a number of pieces have been exchanged already. Yeah. I mean, the, the more pieces there are on the board, yeah. the stronger that knight usually is. I see. Um, okay. But, but but here, look look what happens. There there follows just bishop takes g2, mm -hmm. king takes. More trades are coming in. Pawn takes d4, c takes d4. And here you see black is having two connected passed pawns. And uh, you got to be careful still because black is um, having yeah. some issues with, with these, these pawns. Yeah, right? exactly. I cannot defend it. You, you cannot really defend it. And there, there, uh, there are ideas like pawn on b5 is uh, twice attacked, cannot be defended. You cannot push the pawn because then the pawn on c4 will be hanging. But um, what I think it's very nice here is that black um, senses uh, that uh, she cannot stick to the extra pawn, but uh, tries to uh, give back one pawn in order to activate the, the, the other pieces. Okay. Um, so queen f8 is uh, is played here. <laughs> wow. I'm not I'm not sure whether this is the best move, but what I like about it is that uh, the queen connects with the rook, uh -huh. while at the same time you're keeping the pawn on f7 defended. If you would have gone to another square with the queen, maybe the queen would have come into f3, and then f7 is hanging. So oh, here okay. we see that nine-year-old little girl um, is 
uh, very cautious, very alert, um, anticipating opponents' uh, threats. I, I thought this was actually quite an uh, interesting move for, for somebody at, at that, at that uh, age. And one uh, trick here is that if you would take the pawn on b5, which was not played in the game, uh, rooks will come off the board, and then the queen is still able to go yeah. to, uh, to b4 to hit the knight. And if the knight goes back, then you're running with the pawn, and you see that the pawn on c3 is just way stronger than the uh, pawn on d4. Hard to stop, yeah. Hard, really hard to, to stop. So, um, not really sure what uh, white uh, should do. Maybe maybe take with a knight, actually, is, um, is still okay. But then, I suppose the idea is to bring the queen uh, behind to uh, support the pawn on c4. There are threats like uh, queen c6 check with, uh, with a double attack. And mm -hmm. um, well, the, if white is playing very precisely, maybe there are still ways to 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 hold on here. But it's uh, I think from a practical perspective, black's position is much easier to play. As I, I think the the deep pawn is uh, not worth that much. Um, so let let's get back to the game. Um, instead of taking the pawn on uh, b5, there followed the move queen f3, which is active move, keeping an eye on this pawn on f7. But okay, thanks to Bodana's last move, everything is under control. And this is my uh, moment for you and uh, and the viewers, of course. Um, what would you play here with uh, with Black? There was one very nice idea found by uh, by Bodana in this uh, in this position. Black to move. Okay, so I have two to three plans, and I just have to figure out um, which one makes the most sense. So one of the ideas is to get the rook or the queen on the open file, on the A file. But then again, why? Now, <laughs> let's think about something else. What about F6? Is this a bit too crazy or does it help to maybe exchange those pieces? You cannot take, of course. Uh, this is also not that special. Mm. Okay. I think I... I no, it cannot work. No, I don't know. <laughs> I thought about... Yeah, you're running so out of ideas. <laughs> I'm running out of ideas already. Yeah, that's how quick it goes. So my last... Uh, I will just uh, try to do something crazy here and go with knight b6 to move it to d5. Actually, I, I, I like the idea. Just the, the drawback of, of putting knight on, on b6 is that there are ideas here to uh, to take the pawn on uh, yeah. on b5, probably, probably just with, uh, with the rook. And, and after taking, uh, it's a problem to defend f7 now. So yeah. Yeah, you, you can't move away here, yeah, yeah. because uh, you take on uh, b8, and after that f7 is hanging, and uh, pawn on c4 will be taken as well. So we should go back. Your idea is good, but think about how to improve the uh, the execu execution. And the move played in the game is knight f6. Same idea. <laughs> oh my god. Knight is on its way to d5. If you take the knight, which was not played, there is queen takes d6, and everything is uh, is under control. White is in uh, in big trouble as queen d5 is uh, is coming next. When queens are coming off the board, these uh, connected past pawns they can uh, run pretty uh, pretty fast. Um, that was not on my radar at all. Wow. But you see that uh, also you don't have to play f6, yeah, to uh, to yeah, undermine yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the knight on uh, on d6. You're uh, making use of the fact that the pawn is um, uh, is having too many tasks. I think uh, if you have a little time, because the, there's two plans which this move picks up at once, kind of, yeah, and uh, then you can maybe figure it out. But uh, wow, what a move! <laughs> very nice, very nice. Look, look what happens here because White played Queen C6, which was one other idea behind uh, White's move, Queen uh, Queen F3. Um, now the Knight is defended, so White threatens to take Knight D5, and here you see the pawn on B5 uh, will be gone. Question is how you're going to take it. Uh, if you do trade uh, on B5 with your Rook, then uh, Rooks are coming off. And the queen will come into b4 as well. And um, I think here the knight and the queen are supporting the pawn very well. And there's not enough counterplay. Let me show you one line. If the knight comes into d6, you run with the pawn. Queen e8, king h7. Uh, you can take the pawn with your queen, but there are no threats against the king. And I think that's what uh, had been um, 
calculated in advance by by both players. Um, probably black can just take uh, the pawn on d4 and get ready to uh, eliminate uh, another pawn if you if yeah. you take on e6. Or if knight e8 comes, that's the same. Yeah. Exactly, and I, I think this move queen d3 is pretty nice as the queen covers its own king. Yeah. There are no checks. And it also does support the past pawn and overprotects the knight on uh, d5. So uh, that that's a very nice line. Not sure if both players had seen all of this, but uh, it's it's a very instructive line leading to uh, to a decisive advantage for uh, for black. Uh, what happened though is that uh, white decided to take on b5 while keeping rooks on the board, but that also gives black the uh, chance to uh, get the rook behind the uh, past pawn with tempo as you hit the queen. Queen got a move. And now you're running with a pawn. And here Black is um, having a, a great time, of, of course, because oh, yeah. uh, the pawn is nicely neutralized by the knight on d5. Only good pieces for Black here. Knight comes back to d6 to hit the uh, rook. Rook comes to c7. Simple chest. Just kick the queen out. And now Black pushes the pawn to c2. Threatening the rook, threatening to promote the pawn. So rook c1 only move. And and no. What what do you play here? Queen like a8. Queen, queen a8, a8 of has course. To happen. The queen comes back into the game. Beautiful idea. Yeah, eyeing the uh, king on this oh. uh, long diagonal. And if you do take the uh, pawn on uh, c2, there is uh, knight f4, for instance. Um, and wherever you go with the king, if you go to g1, it's uh, queen g2. And after king f1, it's queen h1 with uh, with checkmate. That's the advantage of a double check. So yeah, that's very nice line. I, I like the way um, she played uh, Bodana at this point. So now the queen also joins the action. No time to take the pawn. White uh, therefore played here to move uh, queen f3. But now the queen comes to c6. So the queen supports the pawn while the rook is also um, uh -huh, maintaining yeah. grip on the uh, f7 pawn. If if you don't play queen c6, actually, may, well, probably it's nonsense what I'm going to say, but no, sometimes no. you have to watch out for this rook takes uh, c2. It's, it's, it's not going to work here, but I like <laughs> uh, what, what Black did here just to use all her uh, pieces. And um, there's nothing White can do. White went back with a knight, but now the queen comes in. To uh, hit the pawn on d4, white goes queen g4, which is a nice indirect uh, defense because if you do take it, there's another little tactic here. Knight f6, you're winning the queen on uh, on d4. But tricks are not going to work against these kids. Uh, King h8 is a, is a good uh, solution. Getting out of the potential check, knight comes back to d6. Uh, attacking the queen, and I, I suppose there are many, many good moves in the game. They're followed queen c6, setting up a new uh, discovered attack against uh, the king. King goes to h3, and um, now everything is under control. It's time to think about how to promote the pawn. So the knight comes in to b4, uh, threatening knight e3 or knight uh, a2 idea. So look at this white still tried here d5. Okay. Don't fall off your chair here and uh, grab the pawn uh, with your queen because then your knight will be taken. So that is uh, that's the main idea. White is also setting up a discovered attack on queen and knight, but you can take with a knight. You're not in a rush. You just go back. Your pawn on c2 it's still there. Uh, so you're not only a pawn up, but practically you're playing with an uh, with an extra rook. <laughs> uh, queen goes to uh, f3. Um, just go back to g8. You're not in a rush. Supporting the pawn on f7. Queen b3. Queen is back in defense. But black goes for the move queen to uh, c3. Offering that the exchange was, of yeah, uh, yeah. queens. I took the yeah. this too earlier. Yeah. yeah and uh, well, you, you may give a check here, but it's not leading anywhere. Your, your king is safe. And next move, there are ideas like taking on e5 or queen d2. Uh, should both be winning. Even knight f4 check is interesting to uh, go to Actually, e2. also, yeah, 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 true. Well, there, there's more. Yeah, plenty. More way leading to to Rome, uh, <laughs> probably. So, um, uh, well, in the in the game, queens were exchanged, which is the the same as as resignation. But that happens <laughs> when you are um, in a, in a bad position. I would say, by the way, this is a very typical scenario in a lot of uh, Slav openings. You're you're pawned down. And you're trying to find some compensation, but in the end, 
black is always still a pawn up. That's basically <laughs> what we what we saw here as well. Um, you just take back with the rook. Knight b5, attacking the rook. Rook goes back. Knight e4. So white threatens to uh, to win the pawn. But there's knight b4. White goes f4. And just don't be too greedy. Don't play knight e3 because then you're giving back your uh, main asset. Instead, first tickle the knight on uh, on d4. <laughs> so the knight is uh, forced to move. And then you come in with your knight to, uh, to d3. Rook has to move. Now you're able to uh, promote your pawn and collect the uh, the knight. So black is just a piece up. One more check. Rook a7 played. Um, King g6. And here white had seen enough. I mean, you're just a piece down. And very soon the the, the rook and knight will work together trying to uh, win more pawns on the, on the king side. But mm. uh, yeah, I, I thought this was probably the most impressive game of uh, Bodana in this, uh, in this event. Very yeah. convincing. Yeah, and um, not only uh, scoring her first uh, woman international master norm, but also uh, just four and a half out of ten is just a really uh, great performance against so many experienced uh, players gaining, I think, something like 75 rating points or, or so. So she will uh, be over 2100 on the on the next list. Um, and let's yeah. see where bringing her uh, in the near future. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, this is again what we were talking about another episode. Maybe in half a year from now, uh, there will be another underdog playing against her as the favorite. <laughs> Roles can be reversed yes. uh, very soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, crazy. Nine years old is just like, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's like uh, this, this I, idea I, that kids can like... I mean, if you look at uh, them on on a real chess board, I mean, you've played against super, super young ones too in your chess life, of course. Then it's like that they're at the chess board and often enough they're looking around and, and waving around and then... Well, actually, I, I, I have not seen her playing uh -huh. alive, but I've seen some photos and she looks very dedicated at a board, not like a, a typical nine years old. She, she main, she's able to maintain full concentration so for a long rare. period of time. It's very, very unusual and, and very impressive. But that's the, uh, how to say, like the, the, the sign of a, of a superstar in, in the making. Yeah, could so, be, could be, could be. Yeah, yeah. we keep an eyes on her. Remember that name. Remember that name. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Robert. That was great. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We see each other soon enough for another episode of The Underdog. Until very then. Good. Bye bye.